In a recent video, I showed you how you could use the new Microsoft Create app for Copilot to create a brand kit that you could have consistent like colors and logos and other things for your company. And that was at an individual level. And I said in that video that I was going to follow up after doing some research with a video about how to uh, publish that brand kit for everyone in your organization. And this is that follow-up video. So after some research and uh, some helpful links sent to me from some folks at Microsoft, uh, I have uh, learned a little bit more about the process for the admin side of things. And this video is going to cover how we can set up brand managers and then those brand managers will be able to go in and publish a brand kit for everyone in the organization. If you, uh, if you aren't familiar or you didn't watch that, that previous video, go back and watch my video about the brand kits in uh, the Microsoft Create app. Where they are is under the More section and then Brand Kits. And you'll see that I've created a couple of brand kits, one for my day job just to show other people how it worked. And then we've created this one for Jolly Roger Java. And then the official kits, there's nothing for this organization, for this tenant. So we're going to have to go in and do some things to make it so that we can publish a brand kit. Now, this is the link that I'm going to share in the, in the uh, description below where um, you set up the process for you know creating these brand kits for everyone. Essentially, you need to create what's called an enterprise brand manager policy. So this link covers that essentially you're going to create a security group first. You're gonna put people in that security group and then you're going to go to config.office.com and you're gonna create a policy where you will identify that group as brand managers. Once that policy applies, those individuals will be able to log in to the Create app, and then they'll be able to publish their brand kit for everyone to be able to see it in the organization. So we're gonna dive right into it here and go through this process together for my own test tenant. So we're gonna go to admin.microsoft.com as our first step. This is gonna take us into the Microsoft Admin Center, and we're going to uh, go in and create the security group for brand managers at my fake company, Jolly Roger Java. So I'm gonna go into those active teams and groups. Then we're gonna go over here to security groups, and we're going to create a new mail-enabled security group because I need an email address for this for the next step. So we're gonna go in there, we're gonna call it brand managers, and then we're going to hit next. Then we need to assign an owner. I'm just gonna make myself the owner. I'm the admin for this uh, tenant. So I'm gonna go in there. And then for the members, we're gonna go in and we're gonna select a few members. I've got Andy, Joe, and myself. So I'm gonna add those people and hit next. And then we're gonna to need to give it a group email address. So this is gonna be brand managers and i'm just going to keep it at 365 deep dive but i could also select like jolly roger java that would be the you know the other domain that i have and then i'm not going to allow other people to send email to this uh security group so we've got that all set up and then we're going to hit create group and another reason why you might want to create a mail enabled security group is now somebody could email brand managers at your company name and then they would be able to uh, like, hey, I need an update for this or, you know, they could ask for changes to the brand kit. And that way you'd be able to like identify, you know, those people by a single email address instead. So we've got brand managers created. That's the security group. Next, we're going to go to config.office.com. This is the landing page for it. And then under customization, we're gonna go into policy management. Then we're going to hit create to create a new office policy. This is gonna be called brand managers policy. And then we're gonna hit next. And we're gonna scope it to all users. So this applies to everybody. Then we're gonna scope it down to people in just a single security group. So we're gonna hit next. 
And then we're going to search for the word brand and hit enter. And then uh, there's an elevated role for enterprise brand managers. It is not currently configured. So we're going to click into that. And then we're going to enable that. And then brand managers at 365deepdive.com. Let me go back to my other tab and make sure that's correct. Brand managers at 365deepdive.com. So that is the right email address. We're going to hit apply. And then we're going to hit next at the bottom. We're going to review this because there's only one policy created. Then we're going to hit create. And then done. And now we've got that one policy created. It's scoped to everybody in the organization. And it's set the brand manager policy for that one security group that I just created. So we're going to let this cook for a little bit, and then we're going to come back in to the create app as one of these users and verify that we can publish the brand kit at this point and see what that looks like for everyone. Okay. A little bit more than 30 minutes has passed and I refreshed my page and I was able to publish the brand kit. So your mileage may vary for your organization, but it didn't really take uh, an awful long time to be able to publish brand kits as a brand manager. So now as a person who's logged in as a brand manager, the way that we go in and publish is very simple. So we're going to go to the create app, which again, m365.cloud.microsoft slash create will take you to this. And then if you go under more on the side and then brand kits, you'll see your brand kits and under the created by you section, there's the two, there's nothing in the official. So if I open up one of these brand kits, now I've got this nice big button right here to publish the brand kit for my organization. So I'm going to click on that and then do you want to publish this as an official? If you do so, everyone in the organization will be able to see it. We're going to click publish. And once that's done, I should be able to go in as another user who's never created a brand kit before, right here. If I go into the brand kits, this is Joe end user. He's never created a brand kit before. So after that's published, hopefully I'll be able to go back into that page and um, we'll have an official brand kit provided for us that we can use. Okay, so that publish window went away. It looks like that's good. And now there's an official brand kit right here. And it's got like the little uh, uh, logo, little like uh, briefcase right there saying that it's official. I can go in and I can still make changes and kind of edit that brand kit if I want to, but it's right there for everyone. It looks like probably I would have to delete it to make it go away um, because I don't see an unpublish area in here and it moved the created by you into official. So it doesn't look like there's a way to unpublish it uh, once you have published that. So that's good to know. All right. So back over here for Joe end user, we're going to refresh create and we're going to see if it shows up immediately or does it take a little bit of time? There we go. I went into brand kit and now I have the Jolly Roger brand kit. It is official. It's under there. I don't have anything that I've created. I just inherit the one from my organization. So if I go in there and I go back into create now, I should be able to say um, a grand opening uh, ad for Jolly Roger Java. Uh, new store location, uh, opening July 1st. And then I can select a style. So like I'm going to do like the isometric and then the brand kit, there's that brand. And we're going to leave it as a square. Say that we're making it for like Instagram or something. And then it should create it and inherit that brand kit. And we will look through this brand area as well on the side and see what things we have uh, as well that we can use. Okay, so there we go. We've got this uh, created and it's using the right red and black and, and yellow colors. So it looks like that applied the brand for me. If I go over here to brand, you can see that the brand kit is already loaded because it, it used that. And I've got the logos available to me so I could add those. 
there's my color palette. It's got the fonts, all of that great stuff. It even has also the images that I can put in uh, to my, my things. If I add some text right here, I can add some text, you know, uh, to the screen and you see that it used that branded, uh, header font for me, the Parada one that I had created in the last video. So that is available for me and it looks like everything is good to go. So that's it. That is how you can identify people to manage your brand kits. And then they can go in and with the single press of a button, they can publish a brand kit that they've created so that everybody can stay on brand and stay consistent. I hope this video was helpful. Um, if you are looking for brand kit in your organization, share this with your administrators so they can see how easy it is to set it up for your organization. And I hope that you subscribe and I'll see you in the next video. Thanks.